So a lot of you might be able to relate to this, but when I started A-levels, and in the UK that's year 13, or year 12, year 13, that's like when you're between the ages of 16 and 18, I think. I borderline failed first year, and I said that in another video, but I essentially got A star, C and E. And for those of you that know, that is not good at all. Even though I had one A star, I still really couldn't go anywhere with that. And obviously that was first year, so it was all right. I had my comeback. I could do it, I brought it back home for me. I just don't want everyone to go through the amount of effort that I had to put in to be able to come back and still be able to perform in that last set of exams. Before we get started with the video, I just want to ask all of you to subscribe and like if you find it helpful. It's a win-win for both of us, it motivates me to post more and it obviously helps you get better because you're watching through these videos and hopefully you're learning something. So let's get started. You need to have the ego to think that you can learn anything you put your mind to. That is really important because otherwise, if you don't have that mentality, how are you going to be able to force yourself to learn? I was going into year 13 just completely feeling as though I, I'm going to fail. I, I thought I wasn't going to make any uni that I want. I thought that I wasn't going to get the grades I want. And I had to understand that back in GCSEs, which is like the the lower level exams in the UK I just put my mind to it I got on with it and I just learned everything that I possibly could in most subjects and you need to have that ego to understand that learning is just learning it's not that different the concepts might be harder but at the end of the day it's still you just memorizing some information and understanding pieces of information no one in this world should struggle doing with that you can use so many types of resources like Anki, flashcards, past papers. You can do anything that works for you. Obviously don't read notes. Come on, I hope if you're watching this, you're not that dumb to start opening a book. Oh, look, I'm reading notes. But I just think that people that put limiting beliefs on them is, is so, so bad. Like I don't want to hang around kids or I didn't want to hang around kids that go, oh, but you know you're smarter than me so you're going to be able to do better that is such bullshit bro like do you understand that anyone has the same chance of learning something i understand gcse if no one revises that's a level playing field the people that are genetically better than you are going to do better than you but as soon as you put in the effort you're going to get better i want to take it back to a quote that one of my first coaches said um in my sport of swimming he said hard work always beats talent when talent isn't working hard. Let that sink in. I put in so much effort in those last three months of my exams that I am so confident that I did well, even to the point that I should be reaching A stars. Those kids that have been putting in effort throughout the whole of the two years who are guaranteed to get A stars, I'm hoping to get to their level in just three months because I had an ego and to believe that I could do it. The second part of this video, I just want to let you know that every bit of failure is a learning experience. I never did good in any of my exams leading up to the final, the finals, yeah? So, of course, in one of my subjects, I got the A star, yeah, fair enough. But that subject is not only easier than the rest, but also I just seem to remember it better than the others. So I did biology, maths, and PE. PE was the one that I got the A star in. And that's because, you know, I do sport, I'm really interested in sport, and everything just makes sense to me. And also in the papers, there's no applied questions. So it's not like you have to actually practice papers to do good, you just have to memorize the content, right? And every time I did crap on a maths or bio exam, I, sometimes I walked into it and for biology example the first couple of tests I did I thought oh yeah I did sick but then I came out with a grade C and I was going what like, there's no way that happened right 
and I'm taking a look for it, I'm like, oh, the person that marked this is such a knob, bro. Like, I was blaming it on them, but at the end of the day, they're just marking by mark scheme. Now, that motivated me to take a look at mark schemes. And I realized, damn, these are these are something different, right? They're they're not they're not what you think they would be. They're so specific to the point that if you miss out a highlighted word, you don't get marks. And that's what ended up completely shaking me throughout biology until I put in the practice. I ended up finishing every single past paper at least twice. So I did chronological order 2017 to 23. Then before the exam. I had a tutor and we'd go through papers, she'd pick a random one, I'd start doing it. And then before exams, I went through the most recent tests just to get a feeling for the recent exam board, right? And that's for every paper. That is, so a quick bit of maths, six times three, 18. 18. Whoa, and yeah, cut this out because you know, this isn't, this isn't math figure it out six babe six years three papers for each year surely it's more than 18. So, nah, it's 18 yeah it's 18 but that amount of effort i needed to put in and that's the only subject i started sort of revising early i started revising new year and exams were mainly in june think yeah they were mainly in june started rising really early for that one especially just after new year that was just me doing the paper week just one paper week which really that anyone can fit that into their schedule it's really not that deep that's a two-hour paper that you're doing and it's just not really that hard to put it in you know so i just wanted to link this back into sports because maybe some of you want to hear this but in terms of a sporting context and being myself quite competitive and still into sports i feel like everything all the concepts that you can apply to sport you can also apply to learning but the developing the two skills are very different so in in sports i set myself a goal in december for short course national championships in swimming and I was having an inflated ego and going, yes, I'm going to PB by four seconds. That's a lot of time to take off in in wherever long I've been training. But still, the four second PB, all of you that know, especially when you get older, that's quite a big step, right? And the only thing I had going in my head for that whole month before the race was, oh, four second PB, sub two minutes. I could visualize myself touching the wall, getting first and just, you know, winning the event. I ended up going from 204 to 201, sub two minutes was my goal, but that's still a three second PB. I still took off crazy amount of time and I was still happy with the outcome. Like I ended up coming third, but even then, like PBing by three seconds, taking off for three seconds at my age where you're only really expecting to take off one or two with hard amount of training, focusing on technique every six months, taking off three is really good so i just think that you can easily apply to school and you can see how quickly you can improve if you inflate your ego and almost think that oh everything that you're doing right now is easy yeah so i'm doing the exact same thing now for summer nationals coming up i know for a fact that i haven't put in the right amount of training because of a levels because of the exams that i've been having but I'm gonna set myself again a goal to PB by four seconds, do the exact same thing, and I'll end up putting me third right now in the long course event. So now I'm aiming from 208 to 204 in long course, because now it's like 50 meter pool instead of 25. So that's gonna be my goal, and I'm again just gonna visualize, focus on that my whole next month or how long I've got until the event, and hopefully it'll work out in the end. I just want to remind you, if you're watching this video late and not at the time of upload, you can still do very well in exams three months before. If, you, if you're watching this three, two months before your, your first exam, 
and you're thinking, oh, well, I'm screwed, right? You're actually not. If you commit 10 hours a day to it, I know that sounds like a lot, but if you have a phase of your life where you just go eight hours, 10 hours a day, just working on any subject that you're struggling, focusing on the topics that you're actually finding hard and doing revision the right way, doing past papers, doing flashcards for the things that you really can't remember, then I promise you, you're gonna get your, you're gonna achieve your goals. So I wish you luck and I'll see you in the next one.